Welcome to the Indie Bandits Twitch and later YouTube. Uh, we're starting something new this time round. Not looking at brand new indie games, which you're probably used to. This time we are looking at a retro game, specifically Medieval 2 Total War. And we're going to do a bit of uh, world domination. And when I say we, I mean myself, Jimmy, and Joe's here as well. Hello. So if you're up for a bit of world domination, then join us. This is going to be a recurring stream. So we're going to put this out every so often. I do not want to say that we're going to put it out every week because we don't know that yet. But we are going to stream our attempt at dominating the medieval world over the next, I don't know, couple of months, maybe. Sounds good to me. Cool. All right. I will jump in and we can... So I'm assuming we've only got a few factions to choose from. We just booted the game up and we haven't completed it yet. So we don't have everybody to choose from. But starting off, I think we should go with the English. I think we should do an English thing. We're both English. See, so I'm, I'm going to jump in here and say you did say we were going to do English. And I sort of agreed with it because that does seem like the obvious choice. Though I am based in Spain and was sort of interested in them as well. <laughs> But I'll let you. I'll, okay. I'll let you. I'll let you do the English thing because I've done my research for England. All because... right, so we'll do Spain then. <laughs> ah, but I mean, explain why we're why we're doing this because this is a this is a game you've touted to me for flipping years. Like since 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 we were both in uni, you have told me how good this game was, and you played it an awful lot in uni. Not this particular game, but all of the game, all of the Total War series. And despite being a fan of RDS and of uh, games like Civilization, I have never actually played this game despite owning pretty much all of them that I picked up in a pack for like six dings. So your job over this series, James, is not only to convince me that this game is good, well, the whole series is good, you also have to convince me that history is interesting because that's something <laughs> you were studying at uni at the time. And that was one of the things that sort of put me off the whole game because I am so into sci-fi and all that kind of crack on that I was like, oh, history, that's boring, I don't want to do it. So you're going to teach us shit, and you're going to show us how good this game is, and over the course of the next few weeks or how often we do this, we're going to also look at why this is such a good game. So no pressure, Jim, but just go for it. No but pressure yeah, we'll at all. With, we'll, we'll, stick with, we'll stick with England, why not? Yeah. Um, hmm. Let me see. We're definitely uh, we're definitely live, though, yeah? This is yep. yeah, live yeah, this on is all good. Twitch and all, all good. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, one, history's interesting, so there's just that. Um, Debatable. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the Total War series is probably the king of RTSs out there. There might be some people that might disagree with me on that, but there are very few games. There might be a couple more now, which I'm unaware of, but that combine the sort of campaign map stuff as well as the real-time battle stuff. So you've kind of got your regular RTS, real-time battle map stuff going on, but you've also got a much more in-depth campaign map where you control what your faction's doing and um, how it interacts with all the other factions across, in this so, stage, Europe and a bit of the... towards the Middle East and a bit of North Africa as well. So this is the bit that's more like civilization, right? Like the larger management thing. I've never actually played this, so there's a bigger like civilization-esque empire management part of it as well and the battles are real time that's all my understanding of how these games work yeah it's a turn based it's turn based like civ on the campaign map and then it's real time when you get into the battle map okay see i still don't know why i haven't played this because that does sound like right up my alley but every time it came to install it, i'm like ah, i don't fancy it and i don't know why <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, hopefully this will change. I mean, obviously, the, the the other caveat is this game is quite old. This game is like 15 years old. So there is the element of they have improved the user experience in the last 15 years. Like the latest Total War games are, are very, very intuitive. But this one is still definitely enjoyable. Like, you know, it's not hard to use. It's pretty easy to learn. It looks way more in depth than I think it is. It probably maybe takes you... 30 minutes to figure it all out really i mean obviously the strategy element is you learn that as you go on but the actual control of the game's pretty quick 
um, as we'll see when we go in. And the, the, the early turns, there's not a lot happening anyway, so it gives you plenty of time to get into the game without immediately being under attack. Um, so, Thanks. yeah, we'll do that, but I'm going to select some of these things and tell you why. So we'll leave campaign rules long because it's, it's more fun. The, the shorter campaign can be over, I think, a little bit too quickly. I want to be able to potentially, you know, meet with m several of the factions. Okay. I'm, I'm going to turn the advice off, if you don't mind. I've played this game before, and it's really annoying when the guy pops up and tells you what yeah, you yeah. can do all the time. Um, the difficulty, what I'm going to do is increase the the map difficulty to very hard, the campaign level. But what the one thing I would say Total War games do suffer from is when you turn the battle difficulty up, the AI doesn't necessarily improve. What tends to happen is the enemy just gets like ridiculous buffs. Right. So like they never run away from a fight even if they're like you know, realistically they're just they should. So what that can do is just kind of ruin the experience a little bit. So I'm just gonna leave the battle difficulty on medium. Okay. Possibly possibly move it down to hard. Um no, I'll tell you what, let's just leave it on medium for now. Uh, but the the campaign map that actually does affect like how the AI deals with you and how they strategically move about the map. I feel like it does more anyway. I leave manage all cities on because th letting the AI manage your cities is just asking for trouble, and will not you will not show all the CPU moves because when you end the turn you just spend <laughs> it yeah. just pings around the entire map showing you all the little agents and everything that's moving around. So. Um, in here, obviously, it gives you a little bit of background about England. So we're essentially setting... The game is set just after the Norman invasion of England. So William the Conqueror has defeated Harold and taken over uh, control of England. England's strengths are very good infantry and longbowmen, obviously. I'm sure the Welsh would be annoyed to hear that that's under an English faction and not through Wales. But either way longbowmen and strong infantry but we don't have a very good choice of cavalry which i believe the french do which if anyone and knows about did. the battle of agincourt was uh literally their strength against ours and we all know who won there i don't actually i think this goes uh, this goes without saying but throughout this entire series i am going to be the history and total war divvy so don't feel that anything is over explaining jimmy uh, all right fair enough well, the Battle of Agincourt uh, was a very famous battle between England and France. Um, a massive victory for England, uh, where essentially... Against the Charlemagne? No. No, no. Um, Let's see, that's how long I know. Uh, Henry V of England, I believe. Um, and it it just proved the superiority of the, of the longbow over uh, any other sort of um, ranged weapon at the time, and also the it, it was a very crucial victory. Essentially, the, the, the French had a very, very heavily armoured, mounted force, which was their typical thing of the time, which would go to France here. You know, they have the best heavy, heavy cavalry in the West. That's their thing that they're known yeah. for. Um, but on the field of Agincourt, which was a sodden mess after a night of rain, they they ended up getting completely wiped out by the, uh, the English longbowmen and English infantry, who, wearing a lot less armour, were much better on the slippery ground. I think that there's some horrific res um, stories from the Battle of Agincourt where you had French knights in heavy armor drowning in the mud and stuff. It oh, was uh, it's pretty awful. It's a good movie about that on Netflix, actually. If you watch The King with uh, Timothy Chalamet plays Henry V, it's really good. And it, uh, it shows a slightly more realistic depiction of what a battle might have been like rather than people in heavy armor jumping around doing somersaults and shit like you tend to get in some yeah, of these classic. other ones. Classic Hollywood crack on. Yeah. No, none of that. <laughs> none of that. Right, um, I'll just click start and we'll get going. Do you want to watch the intro video or are you not bothered about watching the intro video? Um, How long is it? I mean, it's like, a couple of minutes I'm... and it basically just sets a scene. It's not really that good. I don't have to do it if you don't want to. No, I think I think you should hear my cool things I learned about uh, William the Conqueror because I read the I did read the faction info about England because I had no idea about any of the periods of history that this was covering or what these dates meant because I saw 1080 right, and I'm like, well, that's after 1066 and William the Conqueror. So I'm like, this might be involved, <laughs> and. What I learned from my brief research into history is there is too many characters. There's just too many of them. Like, there's a reason that, like, 
movies have like a few characters there's a lot of people involved in everything that happens in history and basically normans i didn't know this the normans were essentially vikings who were given a bit of france because the french were sick of them coming down the river mm -hmm. and attacking them so their king was like here have this bit up here which is now normandy and they were like yeah all right but also we'll be really french and they integrated with the french and spoke the language which wasn't french at the time but you know it's like old french whatever not getting to the linguistic crack on of that but basically everyone was related and then a king died and no one was there to take the crown and then everyone wanted to go of it so that guy harold you mentioned there was another harold from norway and he came over and was like the crown's mine <laughs> and harold went up to fight harold up in like york and then harold the english harold not the norwegian harold won and then was like oh crap william from normandy he's come out as well and the thing is he'd been waiting for william from normandy for like a couple of months but the wind was going the wrong way no joke they were like he wanted to sail over the channel and for two months the wind was apparently going the wrong way <laughs> i'm like that's hilarious but then the second he potters off to go fight this norwegian the wind changes and then William gets into England unopposed, chills chills near Hastings for a bit, sets up camp there. And apparently Harold was like, we are the shiz. We've just fought off these uh, Norwegians. We'll come back down and uh, polish off this uh, this Norman guy. Did not go well for them. He ended up losing in a really weird circumstance, apparently. Apparently they had like they were doing well. And then they thought the, uh, the Normans were retreating and yeah. went after them. And then they got surrounded by them. And apparently no one really knows whether this was like there was confusion on the battlefield and the guys were like, oh, run away, we're losing. Or it was a really clever trick by William. They, apparently that's open for debate. But either way, it ended up with uh, Harold apparently getting a, a cheeky arrow in the eye, according to the B.O. Tapestry. Well, that's up for debate as well, yeah. The... Yeah, it, that, that seems like movie magic, doesn't it? Yeah, because on the, on the B.O. Tapestry, there's, there's a where the inscription is uh, for Harold... There are two people near that. One is a dude getting an arrow in the eye, and another one is a guy getting cut down by a Norman cavalryman. So, so don't know which the debate Harold, is right? like whether or not Harold was just cut down or whether he was killed with the arrow. But obviously, you know, the Hollywood side of everyone wants it to be the arrow because it's a more interesting story. Um, but yeah, no, I think um, from what I learned, it it was a like a, a feigned retreat to try and because the thing is they kept charging. The shield wall but they they couldn't break through so yeah the strategy was well if we feign a retreat they might come down and break the wall and if they break the wall then then we we can get in behind them so yeah i think so they uh, tricked them into breaking that shield wall yeah once the anglo-saxons decided yeah. they were gonna <laughs> they were gonna charge um they flanked them right well that's that's what i heard from brief research yeah, they just uh, they they sort of turned around and attacked, and I guess if you think you're winning and you're charging, like oh this is over, and then all of a sudden the other guys turn back yeah, around yeah. and charge you again. It's like hang on a second, and you're yeah. out of position, and yeah, it, it didn't end well. And then we have uh, King William in charge of uh, in Eng in charge of England, which was, I think, one of the other quirky facts at the time is that no one in the English court spoke English. I think they all spoke French, so. Well, this is this is sort of my jam. This is one thing I did know about since uh, languages and linguistics are sort of my field of study. But anyone who speaks posh English <laughs> is more likely to use no, this is true. Use words of French or Norman origin, yeah. and basically lower register English is normally of Anglo-Saxon roots. Or if you were from where we're peasants, from, yeah, <laughs> slightly Norwegian uh, and Viking yeah. influence definitely i got a few i got a few uh interesting pairs of words here whereas if you were in the court you'd be eating beef which is from the french birth but a, a farmer says cow obviously because that's a nice anglo-saxon word and he's not the lucky sort of gets to eat the nice beef he has to just tend to the cattle and all that kind of crack mm -hmm. on same with pig and pork sheep and mutton all this kind of thing and it kind of created this weird upper class of french-speaking uh, aristocracy and nobility and the working classes of Anglo-Saxons who spent a while getting chinned by William as well, who went around burning down their villages. I also learned that. That was me study 
the the, the I want to say harrying of the north or something like that. <laughs> I'll just harrowing. Just uh, sorry, Joe. While you're going, I will tell the long player who's in the chat that we are going to get to the game. So I'm going to hit start, uh, and then uh, we can. Uh, I'll skip the uh, the monk yeah, t the telling game. us about the. Uh, do you want a little bit of orchestral, a bit of choir going on? You don't need that monk, man. You don't. You don't need this monk because we know all the history, as you've worked out from a uh, from my crack on about my history introduction that yeah. I studied, watching a few cheeky YouTube videos. Right. So, so here we are. The stage is set. We are in uh, medieval Europe, and at the start, we own London, Nottingham, and if I'm pronouncing this correctly, Joe, Caen. <laughs> Con. Yeah, yeah. Con. Good, good nasal AN. Not to be confused with Cannes, which is uh, the one on the south. Is that but, the one know, where the film the festival is? Uh, exactly, but the French don't care too much about uh, letters and saying them all. So you just kind of have to have a cheeky guess at what they what they mean. Mm. So uh, just a bit of quick um, rundown of what's happening. Uh, the French are blue. Anyone that's grey in the game is rebel-owned, so you don't get in trouble for attacking them. So York... Bruges and uh, Wren, be Wren, Wren, yeah, yeah, are uh, are owned by rebels. The further north we go, we'll eventually hit some people known as the Scots. I think people might have heard of them. or an angry bunch. I've um, heard them. <laughs> and then obviously you've got the whole map, which is uh, it's actually quite expansive. You get you get into North Africa, and if we get far enough, I don't want to spoil the surprise, so I'll just keep the other surprise to myself. I'll zoom in. Okay. First thing I'm going to do, I, I love his name, Nigel. Like, it's such a... Like, this guy's called Gilles or something. Yeah. But then we've got Nigel. Uh, I'm going to... So this isn't the one where you can name the people, is it? You said you were going to... No, this I'm a bit gutted about oh. that, yeah. I was thinking we could name them after you know, various characters. But I'm going to pair these two up because there's no need to have them. And I'm going to hit spacebar because that speeds up the movement of things across the map. We do not need to see the ponderous movement of these characters across the map appreciated um i'll just leave him there right so in the game you've got armies that move around armies are represented by these flags which have the cool three lines on them anything that has a flag means it's an army and the colors represent how strong that army is so if you have um a very strong army that would be like vibrantly red all the way to the top that's like the health bar essentially yeah um, so you can move these guys around. I believe in this game you can move them around independent of if they have a leader in the unit on in the army or not. But in later games they took that out. You have to have like a general to move the, the the troops around. They do have a tendency to sometimes switch sides if you leave them unattended for too long, which is a bit annoying. So it's best to have a leader with them. Um, there are agents on the map. So this is a, a, a princess, and you can. Princesses do two things. You can either use them as diplomats or you can marry them off to foreign princes to create alliances. This guy, Aston, um, he is a cardinal. There are priests and cardinals in the game. You start off with priests. The more priestly they become, they can get a, a promotion to becoming a cardinal. And once they're a cardinal, they are in line to potentially become the pope. And it also gives you votes in who should be and who shouldn't be the pope. Now, it's been a while since I played this game, so I might be getting some of this wrong. I don't think I am. As you see, I've selected Aston, and you, you, you can just say whatever, James. I'm not going to know. <laughs> and by the time I work out that I've been, you've you've been rumbled, we'll be like a hundred years into the future, and I'll forget about uh, what all these pieces do. Fair enough. But if you uh, see, I will mention uh, that long play uh, says he loves that France literally will replace entire sentences with an apostrophe. And that is so true that I was watching a video the other day of this uh, this American-born uh, French guy, or I guess an American guy with French parents, trying to say, what is that in French? And you can say it with about nine words. It's brilliant. It's like, qu'est-ce que c'est que cette chose-là? It's just stupid. It's all apostrophes and all hyphens. It's the, it's the wonders of language, and it's no surprise that people get frustrated and then invade entire nations and civilizations is it oh yeah that makes me want to invade france now can we do that can well we i'm going to say france? there's going to be two things that i'm going to set as a rule for this game one we can we never be at peace france. with scotland and two we can never be at peace with france i think there's nothing more english than getting into a bit yeah, of a scrap. barney with those two so 
I think we should set some little rules out at the start. Um, that th those are that's that's the way it should be. Um, just with the priests, so their job is to go around converting the population to your religion. And as I w move around the regions of the map, you can see that says ninety percent Catholic. If I move yeah. to the London area, it says eighty five percent Catholic. Um, 85% Catholic over here. So you move them around and basically the longer they stay in a region, the more Catholic that region becomes because that's the yeah, religion of the English. So what I'll do is I'll bang him over Dogs. here. Off he goes. Continuing once I have rested. So is this tile-based or is this just fully like open? It'll be obviously, yeah, tiles within the, the graphics, but it doesn't say like on the map where the tiles are. So it might be entirely analog, really. Yeah. Um, well, one thing is uh, I'll put Cecilia on the ship. Oh, you're breaking my heart. <laughs> Terrible. And I'm going to oh, tell her to get off the get ship there. over here. Right. So I'm going to get her. Who is she, the princess? Yeah, she's going to go around and reveal some of the map for us. And maybe if we find a good enough other faction, we might marry her off to some some person to create an alliance, but obviously not the French. Um, so you're, you're essentially a medieval pimp. Yeah. Nice. These little things on the map are resources. So there's sheep. There's a bit of wine. Oh, it's that dye. Sorry, wine's in France, I think. Um, what's those that? sheep over in Wales. Is this is this game made by English people? <laughs> it have is, they done this yeah. on purpose? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a bunch of dicks. <laughs> so there's uh, textiles here. There's wine. There's gold. There's silver. There's iron. There's all sorts of things. And you can build merchants. And if you place merchants on top of the resources then you can trade those resources and it earns your faction a bit more money. But merchants are exploitable, so you, other merchants can come and buy your merchant out and take over your resource, so you've got to keep an eye on that. The other thing is, uh, Richard here, with a creepy voice, is uh, a spy, so you can put him, you can move him around the map and he obviously reveals things in the map, but you can also spy on characters, armies, and get them into settlements as well. And they'll reveal information about the garrison, the buildings, all that okay. sort of stuff. Um, so they're basically your information getters. But there's always a risk to doing things like that. They can always be caught. In fact, I'm going to, just to show you that, I'm going to get them to spy on York here. And it's going to play a little video about whether or not he is successful or unsuccessful. And some of those could be quite entertaining. So I'll stick that on now. Off you go, Richard. Yeah. Bugger, he? Oh, he's done the old. Hey, you over here, mate. He's a, what's going on over there? Uh, what was that noise? Uh oh. What's he doing over uh -oh. there? Uh oh. Is that not went well for him? <laughs> <laughs> it's not going well for Richard at all. Oh, uh, Richie boy. Oh, uh, he's gone. Right, we've lost for spy. First move of the game. It's not started well. Longplay says this seems like Civ with a lot of extra steps. I assume this is part of the appeal for you, James, that there is more depth because it feels like that we've got we've got all the kind of crack on you expect from a game like Civ. Yeah. But also with I guess with with what you'd call maybe more narrative elements, and I mean you mm -hmm. know not like there's stories, but you have more like people in it. If you guess if you get me, there are like people who have like a raison d'être, as as it were. As the Norman court might refer to it, <laughs> the, uh, the yeah, like the, the, you know, people with names and stuff like that. So not only do you have the depth, but it seems like you have the like the historical depth as well. Yeah, there's there's like it's, it's, it just goes into a bit more detail, and you can, I guess it's it's more granular as well, isn't it? Like you can go yeah. further into it and move th move more things around than you can on on save. And obviously, we'll get to a battle screen in a minute because I'm going to attack York. So. Um, you can move armies around. So King William the Conqueror is our faction leader. Um, then you can have uh, various units. Obviously, at the start of the game, we've got access to nothing much. Um, in this army, we've got two archers and two spearmen. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to... Uh, I don't think we're going to get attacked. So I'll grab a couple of them, move them over there. So we've got a little bit of a larger army. And we're going to go a bit further on. north. And the green is as far as you can move them on a turn, obviously. Okay, um, so that's their movement range. So that's a, Yeah, he can't go any further. Uh, so Prince Rufus is going to be... Where would that be? Darlington? No, Darlington's before York. Uh, 
Yeah, that would be... I don't know. Uh, not Whitby. No, what am I thinking of? What's the really famous seaside town near York? Scarborough? Scarborough, possibly, Scarborough, yeah. He's chilling out near Scarborough. I mean, you go to the beach, get some, uh, get some fish and chips, all that kind of crack. Yeah. On. I'm gonna look up. I'm gonna look up Scarborough for you now. <laughs> in the in the meantime, I'm gonna tell you that a uh, uh, long play is currently comparing this to Age of Empires, which I know you were a big fan of back in the day as well, Jim. Uh, which, whilst you were playing Age of Empires, I was not because again I was turned off by the whole historical thing. But I know you yeah, and Age other of lads Empires from schools were all about Age of Empires. It, it, yeah, it's a bit different. The battle screen's probably a little bit more like Age of Empires, but even then. Probably not so much. Maybe. It's less focused on like Age of Empires is much more like building lots of units and replacing them. And this game's more you set your armies out beforehand and then you go to battle with that army. You can't like add more to it once you start fighting. So there's a small difference there. Um, yeah, there are there are like slight differences to it, but it's similar in its setting. The graphics are a little bit different as well. Um, Age of Empires is a great game. I love that. Age of Empires 2 in particular. I was quite active in the uh, multiplayer scene back in the day. So I'm yeah. going to... So I'll just quickly run around before I hit the um, end turn. You can check out your faction here. So where you're standing is with the Pope, whether or not the Pope likes you. Right now he doesn't care too much. I was going to say which Pope is it? It's Pope Gregory. It literally Pope said. Gregory. Uh, diplomacy with other nations and then your factions. So like how many generals you've got, battles won, etc, etc. You can get to your family tree as well. It's quite in depth. Um, yeah. your, your list of cardinals as well. So we have one, they've got, other factions have probably got one as well. Over this side is your missions, got none yet. And down here is uh, your finances, basically. So what's coming in, what's going out. So I will... Oh yeah, this is, this is well on granular, right? Like This has all the crack on. Yeah. Else, I just maybe automate too much when I play Civ. Because sometimes I'm just like, right, I just want to attack people with tanks. So please make it the year 2000 where I've researched tanks and I'm going to kill some people or something like that. <laughs> Skegness, by the way, probably what we're looking at. Skegness or Hull. I prefer the idea that it might be Skeggy, because yeah. uh, I like the idea of uh, that spy spent some time in Butlins before being brutally murdered in York. Yeah, well, maybe he was changing, maybe changed his career. He was maybe a red coat of Butlins. Is it a red oh. coat or a blue coat? Uh, I can't remember, but this is going to have to be really explained, because uh, I believe long play is in the states all right okay and red coat i know this is how much history i know red coats is a thing right and it's not uh it's not the same thing as butlin's red coats which no is... butlin's red coats are not mil uh, military <laughs> no and they're not coming anywhere that, that's a terrible phrasing sorry yeah that was terrible but, uh, <laughs> be not <laughs> mind. <laughs> wrong choice of verbs but yes the the red coats are a uh, the Redcoats are the people who work in Butlins, which is a sort of trashy holiday camp chain in. Yeah, which has UK. also been in, around since 1080. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Normans brought it over. Yeah, the Normans were known for two things the long ships and uh, Butlins. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, long play is right. Yeah, yeah, there was no. It made medieval battles chaotic as you were, uh, once it got down to it, it was very difficult to tell whose side was, uh, who was on whose side. It led to a lot Thanks. of, uh, probably a lot of people killing each other from the same Friendly side. <laughs> um, yeah. This game's fairly well represented for that. It's, uh, once we get in, you'll see that they, obviously it has to, it has to be different. It's a game, but they've done a reasonable yeah. job at making the crappy soldiers look like they're not wearing all that much good stuff. So, um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I need to mention, or should we just... We'll just... I'll tell you what, we'll just jump into... Oh, no, hang on. You can build stuff as well. So each of your settlements, click on Castle, um, and click on the open construction window here, and you can build stuff. So you can upgrade your roads, your trading, places of worship, places to train soldiers and stuff. So what I'll do is I'll build some of the basic stuff, because we've got a bit of money. Arics, we'll build some roads. We'll oh. get land clearance for farms. We'll build a port. Um, and land, then land clearance. Do you have to like write a letter to the council? <laughs> we'll build a leather tanner Bang. as well because that increases your armor, and we'll build a small chapel. So we'll just get we'll get the basic stuff up and running, um, just to you make know who sure. Who was the son of a tanner, by the way? Just history fact for you here: yeah, William the Bastard, later known as William the Conqueror. He was a tanner's son. Wow. His 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 missus was a uh, missus. No, what's the person who birthed you? Your mom. Well, that's Freudian as hell, isn't it? Uh, so his mom. Getting some disturbing insights into the way your yeah. mind works here, Joe. 
Yeah, my... anyway, so his his mother was a tanner and not the missus of his dad, hence William the Bastard. Uh, so he was like, got to, <laughs> that, name, that nickname can't sk uh, stick around. I'm going to go <laughs> conquer somewhere so people will start calling me something better than yeah. William the Bastard. <laughs> Actually, I've just realized we have a merchant, Actual Samuel Black sense. here. You know what? He's going to start important. No, that's that's not very good. Actually, that's not very good either. So it tells you how much it's worth. It's got five florins per turn, six florins per turn. What's the wine worth? Twelve. It, it, Tell you the what. The wine don't come from there. You want to get you want to get down into Provence. Well, where better wine grows. I'm gonna... I mean, you've got the champagne over there, but come on, go, go on a better wine hunt, Jim. All right, I'll send him off down south. We've got a diplomat yes. as well, Lawrence Biddell or Biddle. Actually, if he's English, it'll be Biddle, won't it? Lawrence Biddle. It probably won't be at the time. It'll probably be somewhere really weird, like Biddle, because people spoke outside. weird back then. Uh, uh, <laughs> says uh, the Geordie. <laughs> uh, we've got an army here as well, and we could take... You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to stick another Spearman unit with Captain Robin. Unfortunately, weak name. Robin and is not a strong man name. It's not a strong man name. Although maybe at the time it was. Maybe like Robin was what like the, uh, the, the Waynes of today were, you know? I love the idea that Robin might be like hanging about on a council estate, which is the that it's what pictures my mind uh, when you say Wayne. I don't know. <laughs> Wayne is very our our people kind of name. I feel as a there's probably a lot of Waynes around our neck of the woods. Possibly. Uh, right. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the the next turn. So it's gonna scroll through. All right, love. She's come to ask us something. I reckon we should be as as horrendous as possible. Actually, you know what? I do want trade rights. It doesn't it, mean we're friends with them. Constance? Is she, she's not a... She's, she's a French poor. princess. Ah, which is uh, very poor. And Just forgot the whole the whole being rich in a princess thing. Yeah, that means the French aren't very poor. Uh, oh, sorry, are, are poor, but they have modest power and we're very weak, so... I'll tell you what, we'll take some trade rights with them. We're not going to have an alliance with them at any point, but I will take their trade at this point. Très bien. My people and I shall not forget this. All right, love. Excellent, excellent voice Très acting. Bien, love it. Tone it down, I Constance. Jeez. You Constance, you get the award for most French person we've met thus far. Yeah. All right, so here's our first mission. Take York. That's useful because I'm on my way. And as the reward, we're going to be rewarded with some of the best units currently available. Right, you? And it's winter now? Uh, as <laughs> Battle Chestnut? What happened? Uh, Does that happen every time you talk to the French? It just, like, Everything just gets wintery, yeah. What's that one? How oh, am I? Mean. Right, okay, let's tell you what. For now... Alright, mate. Opening a new trade lane, my liege. So, we now are making an extra 12 florins per turn because of that. But next turn, I'll... Uh, may as well get the 12 florins this turn, and then I'll head down south to... Actually, there's no more wine. Ice there is over here. I'll get down there. I used to work around there. Was that a uh, not like literally in that field where you, you made is next to Ren? But uh, <laughs> my old my old job in a summer camp was around that neck of the woods, driven around there, around Angers and Ren. Lovely part of the world. Yeah, highly recommend it. Probably not at this time period because you know it's Englishmen a bit walking around. Yeah, like obviously you know you're currently part of the Normans. That's the whole crack on. Like England and the Normans are now the same people right now. Not culturally or whatever but like politically they're the same, same pretty faction, much right they both think they own each other's lands so you know well um, this is this is also yes, more more awesome research i did you've got Tomorrow's the whole uh, you've got Blandops. the whole thing that the problem with normandy is that normandy is a subdivision of france at this point yep. but england is bigger and stronger than france so like how does that work that's like having you know russian nesting dolls but the bigger one fits inside the smaller one which can't can't work which i assume which is well the war comes into it right yeah well the after this the nobility of england obviously because of its descendancy from the william the conqueror believes that they also should they have a claim to france as well so i, I believe that to this day i think I, <laughs> I think i have a claim to france but i guess the french probably also well i don't know if i'm right in this but i think the french mainly just said we want France. I don't think they were necessarily bothered about England, but the English were very bothered about owning France, so um, that caused a lot of uh, beef or beef between the two. <laughs> well, it caused a lot of cow to the Anglo-Saxons, yeah. but it did cause a lot of beef 
between the French and the Normans, Norman aristocracy, I guess. Right. Uh, every turn as well, you also get these like notifications to tell you what's being built, units that have been built, and what your end of turn report is as well. So the Holy Roman Empire is the current leader of military. Russia, for some reason, is the leader in money, but okay. Uh, and we're going to go in and attack York now. So this... uh, don't attack York just yet, right. because uh, long play games might have a joke. Yeah, go on. I hear the, a joke. I want to hear the archaeologist joke. How do you tell if a British grave belonged to a wealthy person? <laughs> Let's hear it. I'm, I'm very excited now. I love a good joke. It doesn't even have to be good, actually. I just love a joke. <laughs> the anticipation's killed us now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing at a joke that I don't even heard the end of it. It has goods from other countries. <laughs> nice. Uh, there's a there's a James A. Caster uh, stand up <laughs> series on Netflix, and it's very good. I highly recommend anyone watch it because he talks about the British Museum. Uh, and oh, hang on. Oh, there's more to the joke. Ah. <laughs> from another... How do you tell if a grave from someone from another country was wealthy? They had no British goods. Excellent. Yeah, go check out the slander. That's a thing. I'm going to declare war on the US. Can I do that in this game? No. Again. <laughs> I'm going to do Actually, it. We never declared war on the US. I think they declared war on us. I think that's how it works. I've yeah. seen Hamilton. I know how it went down. Over <laughs> some seen... over Only tea spillage. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Let them have the tea. I actually, I am like. Probably the worst English person ever because I prefer coffee. But yeah, that's a good point. I think I do as well. Mm. Yeah. Right. Do you want me to uh... attack York and let me tell you about this James A. Caster sketch, which is really good. Right. So whenever you go to attack a settlement, there's always options. All right, mate. You can uh, construct siege equipment if they've got walls. You can maintain the siege to sort of starve them out. So I could just wait two turns and they'd probably be starved out, but that's no fun. Or we can assault, which is exactly what we're going to do. Salt and pepper. Sorry. Sorry. Hi, hi. <laughs> I'm just reading the, uh, the so, chat again. Yeah. So. Yeah, we had a tendency to be involved in wars with, like, everyone in Europe and the US at the time. And, you know, we're not that big. <laughs> where, 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 do you, where do you think the US learned that from? The, you know, <laughs> not to get too political, guys, but uh, keep in mind... <laughs> That uh, for the the most of the twentieth century, the U.S. was uh, having a good time being involved in. They only got called World Wars once they kind of like spilled out of Europe. <laughs> it it, it definitely it's... is. Yes, yeah. We for some reason just like to have a scrap with everybody all the time. It's well, a pretty shameful part it. of our history, to be honest. <laughs> There's not much you know to what? be proud of. <laughs> it is, but also. It's not like we invented being dickheads. We no, did no. perfect it. We perfected it. That's it. Yeah, we didn't invent declaring war on people, but we definitely turned it into an art form. At least we won well, most of the time, though. France well, did a lot of declaring war, but not a lot of winning. Uh, right. Let's jump into the fight battle. Well, this is the this exactly is the good point. On. All history is shameful, but that's why tomorrow can be better than today. Look. This, this part of British history starts after us getting whooped for a thousand years from people who aren't from the British Isles. <laughs> yeah, but just coming over, it, yeah. If you if you do history in an English school, well, any British school, well, actually, no, I'm going to say English because I don't know what they get taught in Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, and it probably doesn't reflect favourably on, on the English. But what you learn is that you had a thousand years of getting taken over by Romans, Angles, Saxons, who the hell knows, everyone had a go at us, and we lost every bloody time. Then the Normans came over, and from there we went, right, full stop, we're done. Now, let's 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 get revenge on people who weren't involved. Mm -hmm. And then we did that for the next, you know, 500 years or so. Yeah, you make a good point there about the um, the island stuff. That's That's got to be one of the worst, the most shameful aspects of uh, British history is the treatment of uh, of Ireland from the English is, uh, is pretty horrendous. Definitely oh, yeah. one That's of the fair. worst. Right, I'm going to set one, me one dudes out here. I have, see, I, though I don't know much about history, but I do uh, have Irish mates, so I do learn a bit about uh, Irish history from them, and our crack on has been fairly shameful with them. Definitely. It's, uh, it, was, it was not even like... I don't even know how you describe it. it yeah, it was, it, was, it was like outright awful. It was kind of like 
slavery at home almost i don't know even how you but not that that makes slavery better if that it's far away but the fact that like it's a neighboring nation and you literally just treat them like like island was a cage that's oh, my yeah. understanding so longplay asks uh how, how they got hawaii i think i watched a video on this the other day i'm sure i'm sure they just sort of like were hanging out and then just like didn't tell them I, I i might have got this wrong it was it was such weird circumstances you're gonna have to explain it to us though because it was like it was british then it was its own back to being its own thing well initially it was its own thing everything was its own thing and then almost most things became british for a bit that was kind of how the british empire worked yeah obviously not by choice but then what happened was the us got in there but like really clandestine style yes is this the yeah they like they cut off a load of stuff from them and then they were desperate and then they were just like it was it was super clandestine it was i mean you know what like all's fair and love and war in it kind of thing you gotta say like no when you're taking over places is any tactic any less underhanded than the other one who knows but uh yeah possibly i guess you got the argument I and mean, the whole idea of war in the first place is pretty abhorrent but yeah i know what you mean well they did this to take uh they they took it in less of a kind of fighty way i mean not that the i assume there was bloodshed that sadly always is but as, as you're about to so are you just attacking a place with nobody in it? Sorry, I'm... No, no, they've decided to hole up in the middle is uh, not a great idea yeah. for them. So I'm going to block the exit. And uh, we're going to get ourselves in there. Okay. So I'm going to back this them up. This like York, by the way. I know this game's like 15 years old, <laughs> but... Uh... Also, this I mean, is not I... York now, Joe. <laughs> well, it's not now. I assume you're not going to destroy it and then it's going to, like build the shambles or whatever they're called <laughs> <laughs> right i'm gonna get me uh, archers in i'm gonna i'm gonna soften them up but i'll zoom in and you can see what the the guys look like so there's my little peasant archers looking uh quite snappy with their uniforms and their hoods actually um and then we've got oh. these poor fellas wearing skirts out there in the cold they're not looking too pleased they must be they must be the northerners they must be like not even cool man like, and then these are the londoners over here on their fancy horses with what i would say is some very snappy horse gear that is yeah it seems like a waste of money i know it's for a game but like would you as long play said earlier there weren't uniforms at this time and there definitely weren't horses that work part-time as jesters no and we are uh we're going to hold this point here and just shower these rebels in some arrows and they're all going to get shot to pieces as you can see. Oh, down they go. They are not having a, they are not having a good time of it. Like, they're not. Uh, Let's, you know what? Let's swing it around. We can just see those arrows coming in. You know what? They have, I mean, probably cheaper their uniforms. I know they're little rebels, but... The battle is very much in our favour. If we remain I'm true glad the battle's in our favour. Victory will be ours. Victory will be ours, Mr. Advisor. Is this the guy you wanted to hear less of? Uh, he's not in the game, but uh, unfortunately you cannot get the fella to shut up during the battles. <laughs> he's there. He's always there ready to point out the obvious. Ah, you obvious. are winning! Oh, thanks a lot, yeah. Hey, look, there's like a mini Stonehenge. Let's go have a look over there. Maybe we should hang out here for a bit. Look at this. In the... I didn't realize it was like a Stonehenge ripoff in York. Uh, we'll just we'll, we'll watch the battle through the uh, through the archway. Oh damn it! No, you can only do that at sunrise. I think that's how those things work, isn't it? <laughs> it is right. They're lined up with the like rising and falling of the sun. Like that's the whole kind of point. And like in winter, one of these stone archers will like look directly at sunrise and sunset or whatever, whatever. Yeah, and there might be some cool like, prophecy as well. Oh, definitely gotta have a gotta when the have a first prophecy. day of winter sun creeps above the horizon you'll do something interesting Ima imagine if that if they were just waiting for like something interesting to happen they were like god it is so boring here like that's why they came we, up with we, prophecies they were like right oh wait, let's just come up with a prophecy make we something went interesting to such happen great went to such great bloody lengths to build this stone thing and all that's telling us there's something interesting that's going to happen. Get him! 
Go on. Who's getting got? They tried to sneak around yeah. the back. Look at them sneaky buggers. They're, they've gone for like a flank. Shit. Ooh. What are you doing? Did Hang you on. Are they on... Uh, Aye, uh, they're on skirmish. It's like a very annoying Anything mode. Goes. Basically, no, a skirmish means uh, if any enemies come close, they shit themselves and run. How are you, man? So, these all. So, is the wheel. You're going to have to tell us what the wheel's doing. I mean, I assume these are all that orders and capabilities, etc. And that's how oh, you right, yes, manage yeah. each unit. So, you know what I mean? The thing with the little lines in the middle. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, you can click that and it just points out on the map. So once things get chaotic, sometimes it can be hard to see. But that just lets you know. So here we go. I've had a rear charge. Boom. The battle is very much in our favor. Oh, he's back to. Oh, these are just peasants as well. Then crap. Victory will be ours. This tells you how many units are left. Our member men are left in the units. This gives you your strategy, so you can make them run, walk, guard, withdraw. Stop doing stuff and spearmen have a special ability which is the Shiltrum formation which basically puts them in a circle and makes them you know you can't attack them from any side yeah, they're just a circle of people pointing spears around yeah i'm gonna shoot these peasants at the back here yeah. everyone stop bro oh, chill uh they're just uh no one really wants to fight that much i'll i'll get my guys to charge go on get in there is it just the dudes on the edge do they just like hold strong is that that kind of yes yeah, especially with the the shielded guys because oh there they go they're starting to run all right you know what stop just stop don't go too far i like how the uh the oh, rebels flag looks like it has a like a, a transparency oh shit they are the like base of it. kicking my guys off so Actually, no, go that way. Go that way. I don't know why they ended up, like, getting absolutely slaughtered there, but they did. Uh, they're not having a good time of it. Yeah, it seems like these rebels are, uh... Without a cause. <laughs> they're not doing too badly, actually. Alright, you guys shoot the rebels. Hang on. Come on. You know that the... You know that the Yanks in the chat won't, won't enjoy that kind of talk, Jim. Come on. <laughs> you can't just you can't just shoot rebels. That's not how it works. You've got to hear them out, and you've got to hear their legitimate concerns about the current form of government. <laughs> Is that how it works? The enemy general flees like the I don't know how is. politics works. Press onward. We got Break them now. The just, oh, apparently the enemy general is fleeing. So uh, can you yeah, run and cut them down? You can. It actually does a little video when you capture the. Actually, when they're fleeing and you capture and you get the general, it turns into a you've captured them. Although, with the rebels, maybe you don't capture them. Is you can ransom people off in this game when you capture them. Let's have a look. Go on, get in there. Okay, my guys are now just killing my guys. So maybe we should stop them from. Are they kill each other. No, they're the archers. If oh, we continue basically like this, just... we will smash the enemy. Alright, everybody pile it. Pile in! It's time to pile in. <laughs> Dog pile. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get uh we'll get Rufus around here. And maybe he can come do a bit of a bit of a rear charge. But another, this uh, this is another, a formality now, we've just gotta wait until the battle's finished, basically. They they've lost this. It's like in 3D chess or whatever. This is a. Uh, I've gotten it in a chess recently as well, and I I lost a game online the other night because my internet went down, which I was really annoyed at because it was, it was like like Did you this, lose your a, shit, it was, Joe. It was it was a formality. It it was, it was just a matter of putting the king into check because they had no other pieces, and then my internet connected in the game just because I disconnected forfeited on my behalf and oh i was good man i was good i was straight on the phone the isp just uh get <laughs> raging about oh how, how i terrible found the enemy is. general there he is how do you see him you see he's What's got like way? he's got fancy gear on where no one else does oh, right oh, the charge big shiny dude in the middle the big shiny guy in the middle yeah uh, smart the, the only one the only one who went to pick up their armor this morning uh, probably Everyone the only one who had any. Oh, they are like Scarborough oh. now. Look at them. They have caked themselves. Well and truly. Is, is, is Scarborough an us word or an everyone word? This, I, I think this needs to be. 
because sometimes you sometimes you say words and you forget that you're like from Newcastle and the words don't exist outside. Look at like, this fella, look at him. He is not stopping swinging away. that sword. Look at him. Whoa, go on, mate. He wants to be MVP. <laughs> I think I think he's got it. Wow, smash. By St. George, our men have slain the enemy general. Yes, Who we you? have. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? Bloody hell! Uh, what is it? I love the idea like this guy's just coming to York for a bit of shopping and uh, he's just seen this, this going he's like victory. Wait, let's have him cheer Go on fellas There we Can go, look cheer? at them, they are proper chuffed aren't they, look at that Chuffed is nuts, that's a great time Well they, I think that was oh, a no, pretty lost, clear win that one a lot more than us, yeah Yeah, that's a well, That's like a That's a that's a just above 3 to 1 situation that one It's been alright Uh, it's a, I love the fact it says close the scroll. Oh, that guy oh, died like movie. Archie dies on Rainbow Six. Ah, uh, victory! No, Archie, 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 Archie dies on Rainbow Six like he's a uh, like he's playing a horror Take game and it's a jump scare. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, you've always got three options. You can occupy ah, sack or exterminate. Like, this is much like Civ. You can like raise and stuff. Yeah. I'm just gonna so, occupy because it's a it's a it's a village we want so i don't want to like kill everybody essentially oh, okay. occupy is you don't get a lot of money but you don't you leave the town un unharmed they kick sack. off occasionally basically yeah sack is raise, put, raise it to the ground right no sack oh. is um you kill some people and take money and exterminate populace as you bid pretty much just wipe, wipe out most of the population and take less money exterminate populace is what you do when you take a well, you don't always have to do it, obviously, but you can do it when you take a, like a, a completely different faction's place, and you don't want the population there to be like kicking off because they're different to you. So I'm just going to occupy it. And yeah, uh, one place says, "Spare the women and children. Nothing taken, but is paid for." Is that quote from Summit? I mean, it's in quotation marks. I'm going to assume yes, but. Unless they just if it's from a film or from history. Or like just quoting himself, like I'm putting myself in quotation marks here. <laughs> oh, I think we should do that more often. That was Henry V, apparently. Uh we're still in the ten, ah. we're still in the ten eighties, so it'd be Henri the Fifth. Or Enrique if he was in Spain. By the way, the Spanish have this wonderful tendency of translating the names of all monarchs into uh, Spanish. And All right. Daughter of the Crown. Uh, I think this is a common thing. I think a lot of countries do this because they have official names for the monarchs, and because the monarchs have been around so long, even modern monarchs still have their names changed. Uh, we've stopped doing it, but Spain still does it. And I remember watching. Well, I wasn't watching it actually. Uh, my American girlfriend at the time was watching the marriage between what's the older prince called? William. No. William uh, and Harry, yeah. So William's yeah, yeah, the so older yeah, one, yeah. right? Yeah. Who do you marry? Kate. Yeah. So he married William and Kate, and because my girlfriend at the time was American, she actually cared about the British royal family because you know, everyone who didn't want to have the British royal family are the people who suddenly are so interested in them right now, because my current French girlfriend loves the bloody British monarchy, even though they really? had their own monarchy and they weren't. Oh yeah, yeah, watching the Crown, interest in what's going on with a, uh, you know. Megan and God, Harry. I, could, I couldn't care less. No, exactly. I think it's a very British thing to not give a flying toss about our own monarchy. But Ooh, apparently, uh, when they're in the a, news, everyone else is. Just to say, is. Long Play is definitely right there. Yes, they did. They're technically of German heritage, I, I believe. Oh, yeah, not that, not that whole, like, Windsor Schnell thing or whatever they were called beforehand. But, oh, yeah, no. yeah, they did translate their names to be more English, our royal family. But we don't tend to translate other monarchs like i think we still call him like felipe of spain we don't call him philip of spain the current spanish right but, okay but uh, uh long play is right to say the british monarchy is unbelievably dull yeah i think it's, it's also exactly completely the same. outdated and has no place in the modern world but you know now we're getting exactly. political <laughs> i think you can't not get political with a game like this they don't do anything Wait. long play they take money and people who argue for them say that they are like a tourism attraction but my argument to that is if you abolish the Price. monarchy 
all of the historical aspects of the monarchy are still tourism uh, opportunities. Like, there are many countries in the world that have abolished their monarchy, but people still go to see the castles and learn about it and all that stuff. So you don't have to have a monarchy to have historical tourism in your country. Most visited city in the world is Paris. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I believe Chester the, Zoo brings in more money every year than the monarchy does as well. So, you know, although I'm against zoos as well, to be honest, I'd, it's just turned into yeah. a lot of things I'm against. Um, <laughs> right. We got four uh, units of mailed knights for doing that. So in the early part of the game, that's actually really quite strong. We've done well. Longplay's chatting about uh, France and their way with monarchs, and I think I should tell Longplay, <laughs> Jimmy, about your brother and his fondness for the French Revolution. You're a family of people who love history. We are. But, uh, Jimmy's Jimmy's older brother loves the French Revolution, like has a fascination with it. I, I don't know if he loves what happened in it or just is interested by the topic. That's neither here nor there. But the one thing I remember is in school, he built a working guillotine in. Uh, it should be. It should be DVD. noted before you finish with that. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It didn't have a proper blade on it. It did not have a proper blade on it. Uh, it, it was the not blade tested. Was wooden. The blade was wooden, and uh, painted silver to look like a metal blade. And it was only about four foot tall. It was like a, a miniature, a miniature. But I mean, no, it was I about mean, six I don't foot. Want to you say know, this. it was taller than me. Oh yeah. Oh well, yeah. Then, yeah. It, but I, what I remember is it wasn't the full like twenty footer. No, but, no, no, no. Uh, and CDT is shop for uh, across the pond. By the way, if you're wondering, uh, craft design technology. Did you even call it craft design technology, Jimmy? DT. No, we did. Just DT. Oh, so you just didn't do any craft. You just, just did the design. Just and designed in the, the technology. Yeah. Yeah, but I do remember seeing that uh, that guillotine in his. I, I just assumed it was shorter because we were shorter then. But I couldn't tell. Like I guess it was like it was a little bit taller than me at the time. Yeah, I think, it, I think I guess it was I like maybe about six foot, so it'd probably be like the height I just about size. my yeah. height now, yeah. So it's probably um Yeah, it was probably about that. But yeah, no, John did. I think it was like you know, it's one of those really odd Above and beyond. <laughs> oh yeah, like really got into it and like I built a spice rack, man. That's what I built in DT. <laughs> that was my project. Like it was just to show that you could like sand wood and cut it with like a circular saw. That was like the the project brief at no point did anyone say you have to work uh, make a working scale model of a revolutionary guillotine <laughs> of a form of corporal punishment well capital isn't it capital punishment yeah corporal punishment <laughs> bloody hell maybe it was corporal depends punishment how, in the french revolution <laughs> depends how thick your neck is i guess <laughs> <laughs> well with the with, with the wooden blade it would be corporal punishment just hurt a bit I, I still think it would it would do you a, it would do you an ouch yes, i think my Lord. an ouchie joe oh, no. an ouchie Right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to attack Ren. It would be an oosh because it's in France. I'm going to siege <laughs> Ren just to stop the French because it looks like Captain Richard over here is uh, is going to try and do that. So let's build ourselves a ram and let's maintain that siege. So uh, Ren's a big student town currently, so maybe it's a student town back then. I assume that's how history works. It just it, everything stays the same forever. So... <laughs> so now that Ren is currently a large student town, I think you're just going to be besieging students so that they're probably not even up yet or they're out and about having a drink <laughs> you know what i'm, what I'm gonna do here hmm. hmm i'm gonna change that around so we get the tanner quicker and then i'm gonna get war billy the conqueror here and his mailed knights to go on a little trek out to wales and i think i'm pretty sure there's a settlement like right here so. Oh, but for those that don't know, uh, war in our language means oh, yeah. our. Yeah. I know that, that that needs to be said. War something means our something. We speak English, just I guess it's technically our second language. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's that weird fact, isn't there? Like, if you speak really broad Geordie in Scandinavia, you can actually get by. Uh, my my Norwegian mate, uh, ha, uh, we've went through a lot of the words that uh, that we say okay. up in Newcastle that are like just Sire. Sire. Norwegian words. Just Norwegian words because we 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 learnt Norwegian when the Vikings came over, right? I don't think we learnt it. And we're slow, le we're, we're slow learners. <laughs> we just no, it, we've we've just got it now. <laughs> <laughs> take the it's take us like fifteen hundred years, and the people of Newcastle are like we we'll figured it out. Oh, now now we've got to learn English. Are you just kidding? <laughs> <laughs> we've just we've just got the Norwegian out of our language. Right, I'm gonna wear. 
Oh, we're talking. I'm going to go to the next turn. But yeah, I'll just I'll just keep playing this about. Oh, I, no think you, I think you've got like the, uh, the 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 gist of it, right? I can just uh, just keep running through this and give you a few updates every now and again. Yeah, I'll say yes to the uh, to the trade rights and the map information. Yeah, map. In I remember map information in this game is like a really closely guarded secret. Oh shit! It Stiv does the same. Ah, oh, bollocks! I don't think we can win that. <laughs> Maybe I should have waited. Uh... Oh no, I'm gonna have to leave. We will get wiped out fighting that. Is that, is that the thing we're besieging? Is that Ren? Yeah, they've decided they don't like the idea of us besieging with our peasant army. <laughs> I'm going to withdraw from that fight because uh, there is zero chance we're going to win that one. Uh, Alright, they want me to go talk to the Holy Roman Empire, so I'll go do that. That's Germany for anyone uh, who doesn't know. Pretty much just Germany. I think there's a lot of rebels around here. Right. Um, Long play has been learning. I'm going to pronounce this wrong because of the uh, diacritic on the A, but bock, bock mail, uh, which I don't know what that is, but I'm assuming it is a language of Norway. And uh, and I and I flip and love languages. As I said earlier on like languages are languages are my bag. It's a. Uh, I don't like history, but I do like the way history informs language, and vice versa. If you get me, like. Uh, like that whole idea that our language is the way it is because one bastard son of a tanner decided that the English crown was his, like, almost a thousand years ago. Like, that is unreal. The butterfly that, like, effect? Yeah. Like, the idea that, uh, I think, statistically, um, I think over 50% of English lexicon is either French or Latin roots. Essentially, over fifty percent Latin because the French roots are essentially Latin. You know, like it went Latin, French, English, or right. went Latin and directly into English. So, over we're a Germanic language with all with half of our vocabulary being from Romance languages, which is why English is such a bollock for people to learn, I guess. In in some respects, we are really bad at maintaining. Certain uh, grammatical constructs, which can make it really easy, but we're also such a bastardized language that it's uh, it's full of so many exceptions that most learners uh, learners hate the fact that we have we have very easy to learn rules, and then a million exceptions to them. It's like that's the thing. Uh, I'm just <laughs> trying to keep attacking them so that the French don't get a chance to take that town until me army's ready. So I'm just going to run away from them again. Oh, so Ren isn't so Ren isn't French. Ren is yeah. Greys are rebels, right? So, Greys are rebels, so they just happen to so be a like very well trained all. bunch of rebels. So, but now, Orders. Sire. Oh, oh, and it's winter again. Does it just go summer winter? Is it like possibly seasonal? does? Yeah, maybe. Right, that's a decent little group. Right, the peasants can go back because they are useless anyway. Oh, I forgot you can also hire mercenaries in this, so. Let's get some crossbowmen. I'm also going to have to dive into the chat and chat a bit more about languages. Because I want to know I want to know what languages Longplace speaks, because this is a... Because I just think speaking, I think speaking languages is cool, James. And that's kind of my... It's your French it. revolution. That's, kind of, that's my confiture, as you would say in, in French. It's my jam. <laughs> <laughs> that is like such a horrendous God's translation, servant. but <laughs> God speak. Uh, but yeah, how is Cecilia? There's no safe path there, sire. It's just still breaking your heart. I'm your sending heart. Lawrence Biddle off to where uh, for some of this Provence wine. Actually, I'll send him somewhere completely incorrect. So he's supposed to be coming down. Oh no, hang on, hang on, hang on. He's, he's Samuel Black's off to get the Provence wine. Lawrence Do Biddle's gonna go speak to the Milanese, yes, I think. Sire. Oh, there he is. Yes, my have a word with him, fella. Oh, you can't. Tomorrow's journey planned out. Sir. Never mind. Uh, so long play can annoy people in English, Spanish, French, and Norwegian. Uh, I, I think you're underestimating yourself. I find I can annoy people in any language, whether I speak it or not. And the less I speak of a language, the more I can annoy them. So I think that's a win. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> he says I barely, I barely speak even English. Look, look, preach it to the choir here. Um, <laughs> we're two Geordies, which is like. 
often voted the most uh, the most popular accent in the UK. Nice, so yeah. it, it often comes second to uh, Scottish, but normally like that kind of like sweet Edinburgh Scottish, not the not not Glaswegian Scottish or other variations. The there are like tons of accents in Scotland. Yes, like sir. I'm Besieging not going to go out there and act like the Scottish is one accent, plan, but. Sir. The Scots do well in terms of accent popularity, but we also do very well. Not that anyone can understand us, they just think we sound nice. <laughs> which is uh, which is kind of fun. But then they also forget that about 90% of the time we are trying to make ourselves understood by other people. Anytime we have to sp speak to people outside of Newcastle, you you put you learn your second language, don't you? You put your <laughs> you put your first foreign language on, which is English, and then you have to <laughs> convince people that you can speak that, and they still don't believe you. Yeah. Well, I think we should uh, we should also mention um, that what we've decided to do with this game is that Joe is allowed to make one terrible decision per game. Well, one decision doesn't always have to be terrible, but one decision per game. Um, on my behalf for this and maybe in the yeah well maybe uh maybe we can get long play to make a decision as well um in the game long play you you have you have the the power of i guess it's like a power of veto but if you really want to like make a, a strong decision at any given point if you feel very strongly about something you can just like you get the one you get the one wild card i guess a bit yeah. like uh, always sunny isn't it the one wild card move where people who know nothing about this game can make a decision that could hit make or break this entire campaign because we'll be playing this over this is like the big long campaign isn't it this so we're going to be like playing this over several weeks and we're going to let people there uh, or depending on the decision like myself we might be playing it for five <laughs> it minutes it might end today <laughs> well we've got a leather good now. reference to brian johnson of acdc famous yes. jordy is he yeah. a sand dancer is he uh oh i'm not sure from shields What's he I, can't, I, 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 I can't i can't say this but uh i mean uh, i'm gonna say it anyway but uh uh my dad knows Brian Johnson, and a, a, a good few moons ago, maybe like 10, 15 years ago, uh, before him and him and my mum got divorced, my dad was invited down to London to go backstage with ACDC, and my mum vetoed that decision, which was the game-ending... No, that wasn't the game-ending decision for their marriage, to be fair, but uh, <laughs> basically... My dad was uh, my dad was told he could go down see ACDC in London, go backstage, all that kind of crack on. My mum was like, uh, backstage with a rock band. Like to be fair, they're fair, they're getting on a bit. Like even ten years ago, I don't know how wild the parties are at this point. Probably still so wilder than still everything. I know. Who knows? It could be anything. My mum was like, nah, not not a chance, not a chance with what's going on. So uh, yeah, he didn't he didn't get to go do that. Bless him. Good. Good, good for him. I mean, I was gonna say he can now. Doubt his, doubt his new lass would let him either. But yeah, fellow f famous Jory, Brian Johnson is as Jory as they come, and he uh, he does not hide that. Not when he's he on doesn't. Top Gear no. driving cars and stuff like that. Calling everyone Bonnie Lad. Absolute legend. Love him with his ridiculous hat on all the time. He always has that like flat cap. Not a flat cap. It's like a I don't even know what it is. Just daft hat he wears all the time. Yeah. Just Brian Johnson is Daft yes, Hat, which should be the name of his like side project. Yes, a lady needs her rest. <laughs> right, well, I am. Um... out there. <laughs> Let's have a look here. A decent, you know what? The double-edged sword here. They give us the four male knights, and they're costing us an absolute fortune in upkeep. Uh, right. You know what? I'm going to attack. Can you disband the knights? Can you just? Be, like, I can't, but I don't want to because I want to go like sack the Welsh. Um, Your will, sire. Mm, uh, nah, I want them to try and get brave again and come out of the walls. I don't want to be attacking the walls if I don't have to. Doomed, right? I'm not doomed. I've got a better army now. I should be able to beat them, but them coming to me is better than me coming to them. So, uh, the, I will leave it there. Um, they can... Oh my god, what are the French doing? A uh, question for the last 2,000 years? No? <laughs> oh, so what, what are you planning there, buddies? Okay. Uh, Longplay's got a good good bit bands here. Um, a <laughs> mate of his from his or hers. I, I, sorry, Longplay, I don't know your uh, gender. Uh, mate of his or hers from Cork was at a party and people 
wanted him to sing an ACDC song because apparently people from Cork sound like Brian Johnson to people from Germany. Right. And he said, I could be drunk enough to sing, but I can never be drunk enough to sound like a Geordie. <laughs> That's probably true. He can probably be as drunk as a Geordie if he's from Cork. Oh, That's easy. They, oh, yeah. they, they, I feel they could drink us under the table. It would be comparable for sure. We certainly wouldn't be uh, running away with that one. I'm not uh, I'm not condoning binge drinking, but like if you're having fun and having a bit of drink, hit your liver. Do do it. As long as you're not harming your family or your friends, do what you to your liver, whatever you want. Yep. It's your choice. Just be safe. Just be safe out there. Just, yeah, you don't act like a dick when you're drunk. At your service. Oh, 27. Well, hey, Joe, you were right about this Provence wine. It's uh, considerably more expensive than the other stuff. Yeah, I know, because it's flipping Chateau Neuf de Pap. <laughs> said as Jordy uh -huh. as I can, because yes, I don't... Sir. You know what? I'm going to keep uh, I'm gonna keep my abilities in French. Uh, a, cl a closely guarded secret. <laughs> and I'm just going to pronounce anything in a foreign language as Jordy as I can. So Chateau Neuf de Pap is from that neck of the woods. Because of the anti-popes, that was round Avignon. Is this in this game? Does that happen around in the scope of this game? Mm. Do we get some Avignon anti-popes? I don't do think we have we the do papal schism. No? no, I don't think so. Um, oh, I am in a. a so I've I've opened this. So we're going to do a bit of trade with Milan right now. I want trade rights. It always tells you how oh. like what the likelihood of Pally. you getting your um, proposal through is. So this is balanced, and I'm going to throw some. Uh, some map information in there and just make the offer and see what they say. I see no problem here. It is agreed. Duke Giorgio. Oh, we knew a Giorgio, didn't we? Back yeah, Giorgio was the lad who uh, moved over from, from Naples in primary easy. school. Yeah. And I remember the first day at Snowden in Newcastle because he cried because he had no idea what was going on. Funny as hell. He was also just Duke of Milan as well, which was uh, quite interesting. <laughs> he was. That was a... That was a Big t bigger title than any of us in primary school yeah. had. <laughs> Constantly having that posse of bodyguards around him was a bit weird. <laughs> yeah. My lord. Hang oh, on, is they're going to surrender in a minute. Like, look at these French. They're like desperate. They're like, the AI doesn't know what to Just do. Surrender. It's like I want to get that, but I can't because they'll have to attack me to do it. All right, sorry, you said surrender. I thought you were talking about the French. <laughs> uh, I know that that blue flag should French. be white, shouldn't it? <laughs> I make that joke at the last all the time. <laughs> It's like, what colour is your flag? Just white, right? <laughs> Classic English French banter. Uh, long, long place talking about a, a party with Germans, Aussies, Irish having a drinking contest. That would have been Americans fun. interested in the food. You know what? Yanks, you. I love the idea that, like, maybe it's because it's, it's a younger country or something, but I love the kind of, like, childlike mentality when it comes to food, where it's like some people would be like, we can't put that together. That's just excessive. And they're like, no. It's we, like a, you know, like. Can, when a 15... The plate can hold more. <laughs> no, it's like when a 15 year old's left on their own uh, at their parents' house and they're like, I'm going to eat the ice cream for breakfast. Do it. Do it. You you do you. That's like the American approach to food. And I love it. You know, every time we like, these sausages are pretty fatty. Should we just put like maple syrup on it? It's like, fucking yes. That is, oh man. <laughs> like. You know what? My life changed when I realized you could put things like syrup on like savory stuff. Like having having like French toast with like bacon sausages and maple syrup on it. <laughs> I know that was like it was a Canadian who showed me this, but like the mentality's still there. They're young, yeah. they're getting the hang of it. They're not like they're not like French food where they're like it has to be refined and really clever. They're like, nah, just put if it's if it feels good, do it and they and they do. Yeah, that's definitely right, uh, long play. That is exactly All Americans what it's make like. food decisions like a drunk person. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, so that just must mean day. the food decisions made when drunk in America are like are life life threatening. Or maybe they're really sensible. Maybe Americans go home. Go the other salad, way. No, you know drunk. what? You know what? I've had a few beers tonight. I'm just gonna have a salad before I go to bed. I had a kebab I'm gonna for leave, breakfast. Yeah. I'm I'll, gonna... <laughs> I'll leave the I'll leave the burgers till the morning. What is a tomato bisque? It's a type of soup, isn't it? It's like a Ooh. type of soup. It's a fancy soup. Or adobo chilies, like lethal. Because, see, I'm based in Spain. and By the way, I've decided we're not going to marry Josius Carpenter. It's not happening. He's 40 years old. His life's over, man. We're, we're not leaving Cecilia to have to get under the covers with this fella. Not a chance. Do they live long? But I, I want to know. know about these adobo chilies. If... Uh, 
if if they are like the real deal because it's what? it's it's sort of a sad ah uh, like because I, I i miss i miss spicy food because i'm like based in the south of spain and despite what the mexicans did to food they didn't get it from the spanish the spanish don't do spicy food it's not a thing here they are like there's a there's a mexican place near mine and i remember the first time i went to it I asked them, and they were like, do you want Your mild, medium, or spicy Post hot sauce? Desire. And I was like, spicy for Spain or spicy for Mexico? Is and they went spicy for Mexico, and I'm like, I'll have the medium. I was <laughs> well set on the... If it, if they said spicy for I Spain, I was like, just drown it. I must say no. But, yeah. Hmm. Long play is right. Chili peppers come from Mexico. So they clearly got over there and were like, this'll work, and it did. Fair enough. These guys are trying to rinse us, so I'm going to tell Ulrich von Darmstadt... Where to go? The Dutch. Well. Must be, right? He's part of the Holy Roman Empire. Where, uh, where was that based? Was that in Austria? It's more sort of Germany area. So, right, you're going to have to explain the Holy Roman Empire to way. me because Waiting that's not... Now, is that the same as the Pope? Or no, not? no. So, it, yeah, I thought it was somewhat different because they just made a re... Cause Historians they believe themselves... Naming things. Yeah, they believe themselves to be like descendants of the of the Roman Empire. Um, and they kind of got carried away with themselves, if I remember correctly. They um, they were they became righteous. very powerful for for a period of time, but then got a little bit big headed about the whole thing. And uh, I'm pretty sure they were like excommunicated at one point, so and then wiped out. But yeah, I think they believed themselves to be descendants from the uh, the Roman Empire. So i'm not even sure if they refer to themselves as uh, this this might be one of those terms that's been given to them by historians you know like um the byzantine empire they did not refer to themselves as the byzantines they were the eastern roman empire and then descendants of the eastern roman empire it's only historians that have decided to like call them that so sometimes that happens we give people we give like factions names that never actually existed i might be wrong about the holy roman empire though that might have actually been one See, this is this is the thing with history. It is the too many characters. Oh, there we go. Um, long long players telling us the Holy Roman Empire. Norman kid. Yeah, the Normans got everywhere. Uh, down Italy to fight for the they Vatican. They did. They took they took Sicily, I believe. Uh, is that the one Italy's kicking? Sicily's the one it's kicking, right? Yeah, because the other mm -hmm. one's up away next to Corsica. Man, they so yeah. Yeah, Normans went down, took took Sicily, uh, Papal States offered them the title of the Holy Roman Empire, and then, yep, too too much family, long place said, one of the kids took over Sicily. This is how it works, there's too, there's too many characters, right? A lot of characters, look at a family tree from now or then, or Jesus, any anything in history, like, who is who? Because <laughs> I was trying to work out, doing my research, what the hell William the Conqueror was doing, saying he was heir to the English throne, but also the guy who was trying to have the English throne said, you can have it. And then when like a group of Anglo-Saxons were like, actually, Harold, you can have it. He's like, oh, you know what? I'll take it. After you'd already... <laughs> Apparently, that's like the real deal. That is what happened. He was he was chilling and on his uh, father-in-law's deathbed who was was the king of england at the time he was the guy who was like dying and had no heirs and he'd already told william he could have the throne harold had also Oops. been over to normandy and told william he could have the throne and then like a council of like anglo-saxon elders actually said you know what harold can have the throne and i was like you know what that thing about letting william have the throne i go back on it i didn't mean Checks it guys. for life skin cheese i was drunk whatever Right, I'm gonna. Yeah, wear. sorry, I forgot that. Did I? Did I swear oh, on those two sacred horses, artifacts, which is apparently what he did as well? He put his hand on two holy things and said, "I swear you'll have this crack on." So we are we taking Ren now? They've what's... decided instead of surrendering their last they're ditch gonna attempt, they're going to come out and have a go. Uh, is it last ditch? Because you said they were pretty tough. Yeah, but I need to. Uh, They've got a wall city. Where's drop. our advantage? We were sieging them, right? So what's that? What's that given us? Uh. Well, sieging is not really an advantage. 
That's why I wanted them to come out. So you've drawn them out now? Yeah, they've had to come out. Oh, so you wanted to come out the walls because you've been just... Do, does sieging like stop them getting scran or food or anything? Or they, does they, it, like, harm if, their city? If well one more turn besieged? had gone past, they would have surrendered because they were out of food, basically. So instead of surrendering, they've just decided to... Virginia. Basically have a good fighting. Are we, are, we, are we in a good state to chin them? Is that uh, we should be all right. Yeah, it's just, uh, just trying to get the. I'm trying to remember like what the old uh, controls are for this. What are the little chicken hutches? Chicken got? hutches? The little wooden things. So they like? Do they? They were the rams, but uh, they're sort of useless at You're this point. So yeah, all right. That's why everyone's running away from them then. Because are they they're sending? Yeah, like... uh, they're sending some rebels out to go get me generals. So uh, you can. Run so are you there. using these? So you creating lines with the what are the lines at the front? You've got these like big three big lines. Okay, what run guys, run, 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 run. Who are the dudes running away as well? I need to know who's who. These, this is the general. I'm getting him out of the way. The battle is he needs very to. Much in our favor. If we remain in these guys favor, are going to attack them. The I've got the archers shooting at the their crossbowmen. They've just charged their knights into a bunch of spearmen. It's a bad idea. So I'm going to get my knights spearmen. Knights spearmen advantages the spearmen, right? Yep. Because they stab I've horses. Basically doing a typical uh, hammer and anvil situation here. So uh, I have no idea what that means. Is that converting to communism or... <laughs> create a no, line to stop things and then send your flanking force around the back. So they're about to get... Okay. Uh, so what, of, what yeah. is the flanking force? Are they the horsey boys? The male knights, yeah. So they're all going to die now. So I'll stop... Or the... female knights. They can stop firing. Why <laughs> you just brush that one off? The enemy are it's like, no, bloody. I'm not engaging with that. Oh, let's let's just pretend that you didn't say that. Right, the knights are chasing them back inside the uh, thing, so they should take care of everything there. I'm getting the spearmen to attack there. Knights, where's my general? You can come up. I've got me uh, archers, they're not really needing to do anything. Come on, in you go. Everybody attack. Are they pretty fucked right now? Because oh, yeah. that's what it looks like. It looks like smashed. there's very few of them. At least what I can see. Is there any indicator on your like screen other than like the actual battlefield itself of how many of them there's left? This like... bar here, percentage of allies killed and percentage of enemies killed. So the blue, which is barely visible because they've been absolutely trounced, is uh, them and the red is me. So it's very heavily weighted in my favour. Let's just watch oh, these right, knights so... get taken down by the spears. Come on, guys. They're not even very good knights, are they? <laughs> That's not a joke. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> they're just they're just peasanty knights, right? That's why they don't have the fancy the fancy horse jester armor. No, right? they've they've got mail. They wear mail, but uh, you know what? I'm gonna charge me general in. Go get them, boys. So, is there Here like a Schmar. Is there like a risk versus reward with the uh, the general? As in yeah, like he's a very powerful unit, but losing your general has a massive uh, morale impact on the on your game. So, a bit like the queen in chess. Yes. Because you know I'm all like queen's gambit now that I've taken up chess in like the last week. I know what the pieces the do. I know how they move. Like the, is. <laughs> oh, the enemy generals here. Then. The oh, there he is. You see him there. All right, are you following him on horseback? Yeah, there, Lord, this guy. Is, is he on a horse? Is he the fancy the horse? He's got the fancy horse. Go on, get him. Get him! Actually, he's going to have to run through me, guys. He's definitely going to go down here. Is he the one with the flag? He's no. the one who's wearing the, like, plate armor here. There he goes. <laughs> oh, we get a little animation of them getting... Oh, so that's it. When they flee, you capture them. If they're still fighting, you kill them. So we've got... Well, look... If, you, if you're fighting a faction, like an actual faction in the game, and you capture generals, you can the ransom them back. Yeah. Because this is a rebel faction, um, the there's no one to ransom, no one to ransom to. to, so I'll just, uh, I'll just kill them after the battle's done. Uh, I don't know why this hasn't just gone to a you've won screen. I don't see anyone else left, up, left alive, unless there's, there's someone faffing around someone in needs here. To get you in. What's the timer for, by the way? In the top right. Uh, that's uh, if I hold the town center for that long, um, I win because I've claimed the town. We would say capture the flag. Yeah, oh, well, everyone can just run in now. Um, oh, there's a church bell going off. Where's the? See in the map there? There's still some like stragglers. 
so I don't know where they are. Have they been like some... something happened in the game and they've got like stuck behind a building or something? <laughs> I cannot see where they are. You don't see anyone knocking around, do you? Your guess is as good as mine. I can barely see what's going on. Right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to speed up the game because uh, we're going to win in a minute, so. Ah, I didn't know you could speed up the game. This is a, this is a pro for me. This is the kind of thing I would I would be all about speed and everything. Up. I would play it all at full speed and lose terribly. That's the kind of like weird impatience I have. And there we go. This is a clear victory. Uh, there's one guy. There was one guy left. Where was he? Uh, not Captain Germain, though. Kind of want to see if we can spot the little tinker. And why was he so brave as to not leg it? He's just like, nah, I'm hanging around. He's the one student I mentioned earlier who was all like, <laughs> uh, oh, he slept in. He slept in. He's like, oh, he didn't hear the bells. He's like, oh, I'm really sorry. I he didn't missed hear the, the bells. I didn't hear the town bells. Uh, you know, had a heavy one last night. Bit, of a, As you commanded, bit too many ales. <laughs> they drank ales back then. Yeah. Ooh, we have in this oh. as well. If we occupy it, does it add it to our crack on? Aye, right, we've got that now. So we're pretty oh, much known in oh, northern France now. I'm going to say no to Leonard Long, but... Uh, Why? Because he's crap. He's got a few He's got a few little benefits. So what's his, what's, his, what's his validity? Because he, he's proper old. He's old, so and he's not going to produce the likelihood of him. Although it matters less with the men, producing... What you want is um, like people to produce kids so that you've got more princesses and generals in future. Um, can you use them in a fight as well? Is that what you can, yeah. To? So he's, mm. he's, you know crap in a fight he's he's loyal though that's good and he's sort of pious but then these are his traits as well so he gets two plus to command one plus to chivalry want piety surely if we want to give us an heir you don't want to be that pious right or is that not oh no the, i don't think the the church at this stage was bothered about that level of uh that side that side of piety <laughs> it was oh, more right so burn piety, heretics how he likes, yeah how much he likes the church yeah. is piety right it's not how much he uh refrains from getting the horn mm -hmm. but i'm going to save the princess for potentially a, a marriage and an alliance to somebody else unless someone really good comes along so i'm going to decline this fella as well oh, we need to recruit a priest apparently the pope's asking us to do that and we'll get 500 quid for it as well so the pope tells us what to do because we're catholics essentially occasionally oh henry's uh come of age Who's Henry? See, look, this I mean, is exactly it. Aston is now a monk, so he's got uh, he's one plus in piety. Or he's got the monk yes, trait, but he's nice. lost purity, so it probably means he's going around having his way with Check the locals. <laughs> right, but so how do we tell what's ours? Is oh there like God. there's a little red border, right? So you see this map down here. Ah, uh, yes, I can see that as well. Also, these areas are like in segments, I guess. You just capture segments of the map rather yep. than like individual tiles. Yeah, and then each like... Each segment belongs to a town, perhaps. Yeah, and you can either have castles or cities, essentially. And the cities are more buildings and things towards like um, campaign map stuff. So money uh, and like re resources and things. And the the castles are a bit... you can build more like military focused buildings and they're much easier to defend as well so if you get into a, a fight on a castle you can defend a castle with a very small army essentially it's it doesn't um as long as you've got okay. some archers it can oh okay so this is like the way i see it is this whole map thing is a bit like risk if you played the board game risk mm -hmm. where you have actual just territories yeah. Into each territory, there seems to be like a, a a town that's like the capital of X territory, as it were. Like I can see on your map, the what is England is split into like three little segments, as it were. So far, yeah, it will be more. And soon. it looks like you've got London, Nottingham, and York are those three segments. Yep, those are three segments. Each town, ha each town has a segment, and you've also got a. I forgot where where you had Normandy, but you've sort of got like Ren, which is like acting as Brittany and Ren a bit of like West Caen. France. Caen. Oh yeah, I forgot about Caen. Caen. Uh, yes. All right, so it all splits into that, but the car the units within that move like in all an analog manner. Yeah. They don't move like as if they don't jump from segment to segment. They actually have to move through you each region as if they were like accurate uh, distances, as it were. Yeah. Um, cool. Oh, and you've got ports now, actually. I can put me. 
in a boat and a port, and uh, I might need to build more actually because I do I forget about that side of the game all the time on this. Um, the old portiness. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna build. Go get someone in there. Skeggy. Go build someone in Skeg. Get where Skeg is. Let's get some stuff here. So does now. everyone need a crack on? So. Oh shit. Um... Stop it. So are there various benefits to each of these buildings or do they just add to like different resources? Like do they have like special abilities or do so they just have like roads improve trade and travel between areas that have roads? Uh so like land if clearance you, build you can a road build and Ren. Yeah, it it may, you can move car, faster like towards car and anywhere like roads else. Roads and Civ, but you do it like just one region to region, not on a tile by tile basis like in Civ. Welcome back, Longflay. Um, yeah, basically, and uh, the land clearance ends up, you can build farms and things for resources. Um, essentially, they're, they're, all the buildings mean something. Some of them offer like population happiness as well, so the churches and the brothels are things like that, keep people happy. Um, Probably in very different ways. In very Maybe different in ways. ways too similar that we don't want to really get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> See, so like King William the Conqueror is quite a, like, a high level... Uh, ruler in this game. That's your. That's who you're technically playing as, mm -hmm. according to the stats. On He's the, the faction button. leader, so he gets benefits for being the faction leader as well. What happens uh, if he dies? If you send him into battle and he dies, is that a game over? Or no, no, because we've got other people. So he's got two sons. He's got Henry and Rufus. So one of them would take over. He actually, he's the faction heir. There it says Prince Rufus. So he would just take over. Are they legit people like real real people i believe the yeah there's a few at the start that are and then i, I think if you it's like satisfy certain like random things in the game you can also get i'm pretty sure actually at the start of the game el cid controls valencia um el, el, el cid el cid el of cid. uh was a a rebel kind of warlord of spain he's, he's since become a bit of a robin hood style not not for what he did but kind of like in terms of fame amongst the spanish he's quite a popular uh character from the medieval period yes um, I've, I've heard of him but literally know about him so he's moorish uh long place says he was he was moorish which is kind of important i'm down in i'm down in that neck of the woods not not, not that the moors are still here but uh yeah uh seems like a very popular moors spanish character yeah it's, and he, it's, he, it's, i think he was like his actual life was not um the legend that's grown up around him is not totally accurate to his life. He's become like a Spanish like hero, Hood. but I don't think I think he was like very much like on his own, independent. I don't think he was part of the. If unless I'm getting that wrong, but I'm pretty sure I remember reading that El Cid was not like the Spanish hero that the Spaniards kind of say he is these days. I don't think he was quite that nice, and I'm They've pretty kind sure of adopted him they for have their cause. And he starts off in Valencia, which is around here somewhere, isn't it? And um, uh, go to the left of your mouse, opposite that island. Like here. No, down. That's more Catalonia. Oh, down uh, here. Valencia is southeast. So, like, of Spain. I'm pretty sure El Cid starts controlling Valencia. So, if we'd been the Spanish, one half of this would be occupied by the Moors, um, and two, El Cid would be down here, I believe. So there are characters yep. like that swanning about, and you can, yeah. I guess, don't like... don't think those rivers are accurate, by the way. Uh, <laughs> you never can seen that much water in well. any river in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spain has... Uh, hey, long play long plays in the yeah, American no, it, Southwest, it, it, I believe. Not That's right. not, not a world of watery rivers, is it? Much like southern Spain. It, it's funny showing people from the UK places like Spain, where you're like, and here's the river, and they're like... There's no water. I'm like, yeah, but it's still a river. <laughs> and people are like, no, it's not. I'm like, yeah, it is. It's just only a river some of the time. Let's just say, I don't think... We, do we have any temporary rivers in the UK? I'm fairly certain it rains enough in the UK that all of them are permanent. I think we sometimes... The only temporary rivers we get are the ones where the land's flooded and we've just got a brand new river for a few minutes or a few days and then it goes away. For a few years. That's interesting. Because by its name, it would indicate that it was the opposite of that. <laughs> yeah, Long place yeah. in that uh, the Rio Grande is generally a, a river you could walk across, which I feel like maybe you should change the name. 
do they i, I want to know if over there they actually pronounce it like rio grande or rio grande as in like the sort of spanish way or if they really try it like someone who's being RC in like a Mexican restaurant and being like jalapeno, do you know what I mean? Like, are they? Do they have to like really, really go on the whole like, you know, sell it, like call it like the Rio Grande and do something like that? Mm -hmm. Because there is a there is a fine line between being linguistically accurate when you say foreign loan words and sounding like a dick. And I worked in a cinema, so I know that because there's a, like how how close to correctly pronouncing nachos and jalapenos do you want to be jalapeno because i've had people call them jalapenos in proper <laughs> proper jolly thing nachos and jalapenos and it's like you want to be like that you don't want to correct them and say actually uh you know what there's a there's that little wiggle on the end so pronounce it like it's an n and a y next to each other so you just like Tomorrow's just say it back to them and planned just outside. hope they hear, but don't like Sign. really oversell it. Like Tomorrow's you know, journey planned you're in like Sign. a Wild West film and you're playing the Mexican. Yes. <laughs> a lady needs her rest, sire. Oh, a lady needs her rest. Um, Apparently, Texans call it uh, Rio Grande and Rio Grande, but uh, in New Mexico, I or actually I don't know if that NM is never mind or New Mexico <laughs> because I forget how. Uh, I'm gonna go with New Mexico, and they say just it's Rio Grande in Spanish, and because uh, I know New Mexico is all about that pueblo life. Orders. Which uh, I'm sure I'm currently showing the last uh, better call Saul, so probably not an accurate representation of New Mexico whatsoever. Orders. But the architecture is completely yes, baller in that series. Joining like <laughs> you saw, yes, like I'm like all that stuff is so cool. Like I love the design. Jimmy, you're a you're a Yotes fan, so you uh you know what those like those jerseys, oh, the, yeah. the whole Pueblo style are like cool as hell. Like every, that whole like Pueblo art oh, no. art and architecture sounds cool as hell. We've got a French merchant trying to buy out our merchant here. What happened? One place says the culture is oh. amazing over there and you don't get Mexican food. You get Oh, you get new Mexican food, which is no, mostly Native American. I thought you were going to say you don't get Mexican food. You just call it food. You know, in the same way we, we don't call them English muffins. We just call them muffins. Yeah. So what did the, what did the merchant do to you? He tried was to take over uh, my trade route, but he failed. Um, well, as he should, because we have... Look at that this, Joe. Apparently the Provence. French and Scots don't like us too much anymore. <laughs> Shocking. Uh, yeah, yeah. I could have put I could have put a lot of money on that bet. <laughs> right, I'm going to send some the, of these. You know what? I'm going to say, oh. as Geordies, I feel that even though the, the Scots absolutely really hate us, they hate us less than the rest of the English because we're not we're not that English, if you nah, get me. Nah, yeah, we're pretty... Uh, on the scale of closer Englishness... To them. Geordies are, well, yeah, I mean, the border used to run through through Newcastle, technically, didn't it? Is that not why we had the wall? I mean, I know that's going back 2,000 years, but you know what, yeah. And this isn't, like, one of those, like, Trump walls. This is one of these, like, Roman walls. Well, this is an actual wall, first of all. <laughs> yeah, we built it. It's not a fence, right? Did he build a fence? Is that what he did? Yes, sir. Uh, he took a, he took a fence. I know he uh, did that a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Long, long, play, long play says the little three foot wall run across England. You know what? I, I think people were shorter back then. Uh, I was going to say, do you know how tall Scots are in general? <laughs> <laughs> that's know, that's about two feet higher than they're able to climb. You know, I, I can't, I can't climb that much after I've eaten uh, there. Haggis needs uh, haggis neeps and tatties, though as good as they are, uh, you don't, you don't feel like climbing out after that. Yeah, I do love a bit of haggis. I do, I do mish. Uh, mish. mish? Ooh, ooh. I've, I've turned into Sean Connery because I yeah, started speaking yeah. about Scotland. God rest his soul. Um, <laughs> yes, too high, yeah. much too high for that. The uh, yeah, too high to drive a rascal over. I've, I, I don't think rascals is not a very UK thing, is it? It's it's very American. The rascal is such a and you know the the obesity pan pandemic is not really a not great, but. Jesus, like I remember going God's to servant. going to my way. Disney in Florida, and you're like, does, does, does anyone walk? Like, it was, it was, I have rested. 
from like the British perspective, you're like, Ooh, whew, there is a lot of people in mobility scooters, my lord, and a lot of people Post in running desire. shoes who have never, who do not look like they yes. do a lot of running. <laughs> and I am, I am not currently a, a, a bastion of fitness, yes, as it were. I've, I've ran half marathons and marathons. Yes. And when I did those, I, ra I wore running shoes. That's At for sure. Oh, but a lot of people in Disney win. World, a lot of people in Disney World, wear running shoes and don't. They've ever run a day in their life. It's a weird choice of footwear. <laughs> that's the that's the that's the one take home I got from a. Uh, right here, here, from Florida. Here's going to be the uh, the question. I think we'll we'll end we'll end the stream here, setting up for next episode. But I want to know. Um, what the consensus is between uh, long play and yourself, Joe? Let's do it. Um, who I should attack first? Who's not a rebel? Are we going to go for France or are we going to go for Scotland? Oh, man, uh, wait, look, that's not a fair question to someone who's English. Uh, I need it one. Uh, see, long, long vote play for Scotland. Yeah, long play wants to go for Scotland, and I'm totally cool with that because. Long play should know that like half of my family is Scottish, but my last is French, so I can get I'll get in trouble. I'll get in trouble either way, and probably unlike a lot of people at the time, I'm not sleeping with my cousins. So I'd probably I'd probably go with Scotland too because I'm I'm less worried about upsetting them because I know what side my bread's buttered on. <laughs> so I think upset the Scots. Right, yo. That's what we'll do. I'll. Uh... How much are we Unf going to upset them, though? Unfortunately, Wales doesn't them? have a faction in this game, so they're just rebels. But I'll take that, and then uh, we'll go north, and we'll go for uh, what I believe is... What would that be? That'll be Edinburgh. That'll be, it's got to be Edinburgh. And that'll Surely be, that'll be Inverness, I reckon. Edinburgh. Inverness. That's Edinburgh. Inverness is up the way, right And then the this top. will be uh, Dublin over here. Erroneously placed. That's That wooden castle is not where Inverness is, but it'll probably get called Inverness. That'll be Inverness. Maybe Aberdeen. No, it'll be it. Dublin. Be Right. I no, think it'll right, be Inverness. No, the wrong screen. Uh -huh. So it could be, yeah, like Inverness, erroneously placed. It should be further west, but it's probably it's too far up to be Aberdeen. I think it's Inverness, you know, because uh, I know it's not technically correct, but it, well, it's so it, far it's, north. Guess, it's the biggest city. Where probably Inverness is. Yeah, I mean, like they've. It's it's the biggest thing up that way, isn't it, for Scotland? So I'm I'm Aber gonna Aberdeen's take, up the east coast, like following the east coast round, it's like Dundee then Aberdeen. It's like here, isn't it? Like up here, Uncle's. Uh, what, uh, it's like on the nosy bit. This bit, I, yeah. I don't know. Do you see? Uh, do you see the UK as like a bloke with a big nose having a kneel down with a cape? Because. <laughs> <laughs> You, you can sort of see it. I mean, it, it doesn't look as much like a teddy... Not in this game, but it doesn't look as much like a teddy bear as Ireland does. Ireland looks like a teddy bear in, like, real life. It's really weird. Like a sideways on teddy bear. Not in this game, it doesn't, though. It looks no. like an amorphous blob I was gonna say, designed by like people who were probably from England. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the people boot, like, obviously. We've got the boot. Uh... You know, in France, they call, they call France the hexagon because uh, they think their country looks like a hexagon, but they use the expression in all four corners to mean everywhere. So they will literally say in all four corners of the hexagon to mean all over France, and it makes no sense. <laughs> all right. In all four corners of the hexagon. Of course, it, of, course, of course it's in all four corners of the hexagon. By the way, this is it's where a lot of uh, the fun part of the game takes down. place, because the oh, Pope... Sure. There it is. Is it that one? Yeah, it will be. The Pope at some point... Is that the Holy Land? That's uh, Jerusalem right there. The Pope will at some point call a crusade, and uh, you have to answer it, so we'll be Obviously. gnashing off to try and take over Jerusalem with a bunch of the other Western powers at some point, and then I'm sure the Moors and the Muslim side of it will call a jihad in return, and it just goes on and on and on, as it did. <laughs> slaughter after slaughter after slaughter. Did, does, and will. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately. You, you know what? I mean... The one thing you'd say is that like bacon's really good, but that wouldn't turn them. So <laughs> it's it it's a t it's a tough sell, isn't it? Yes, long play that is an exceptionally good tactic. Um, 
and if you are you can actually you can actually use that i'm pretty sure you can use that tactic in your to your benefit actually like by so doing the tactic it is not go to the crusade and then chin everyone who's gnashed off to the crusade yeah uh because they they, they, they nearly that's a always down the line right it's a little ways down the line but there's if you're the pope or you you, you can you've got a lot of influence with the pope you can influence them to start a crusade like just as you're about to chin some people. Yeah, and then just wait a few turns for them all to gnash off and then uh, in you get. Right, so but, hang on. But you will be excommunicated if you do that and that will have um implications. But yeah, so we'll, no we'll more decide. And wine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so hang on. So what's our what's our strategy? Where are we? I mean I know where we are, but I mean where are we in the grand scheme of things? So we've got We've got like Normandy and the uh, uh, Brittany, I guess it is <laughs> Brittany and like northwestern France, <laughs> and we've got most of England, and we're about to take what is Wales, but the game doesn't count as Wales; they're just rebels. And then yeah. we're going to <laughs> <laughs> if no, that's uh, it, that's how that's how more Spanish. <laughs> flim it, oh, maybe flim Arabic. It up. Yeah. Actually, there's a few too many vowels in that word for it to be Fre uh, Welsh, isn't it? Carnarvon. I don't know. It sounds like a, I'd read it conniving. But we've also got to chin the the, 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 the Scots as well, right? So, what's <laughs> yeah, our, what's Henry VIII was definitely time? like Bender for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Our play, well, well, we'll we'll get Scotland, and I reckon we should take over Ireland. That should be part of the next one. Well, let's let's get the, we, the home nations. Are we building up to? Yeah, the home nation. Well, the, the, whether they want to or not, I mean, I guess they get called the home nations by our will. Yeah, <laughs> let's do what the English you know did, what? and we'll take over the home nations first, and then we'll call them the home nations. Then we'll call them the home nations. Army. Yeah, um, and and then we're gonna we're gonna build up Pally with the Pope, and then when he actually calls us to go to a crusade, we're like, yeah, no, about we'll tell that. him where to stick it, and then it. we'll chin the French. Just chin the French, yeah. That could be, and then and then once we've got. The British Isles in France. Oh, is this more Shakespeare long play? Oh no! I think okay. That's I, th from Futurama. I thought with you when you meant the trees. I thought you were quoting uh, Macbeth with the 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 trees of uh, Dunson and is it Dunson and Wood? The the prophecy when the trees of Dunson and Wood march, he loses kingdom, and he's like, "Well, that's never going to happen." But the prophecy came true because the army that came towards them cut down the forest to disguise their numbers. So yeah, I thought, I thought that's what you were going for. But uh, no, no, we'll go with uh, Agincourt. I was giving Joe a bit of a rundown of Agincourt before. I have completely lost the plot. What are you on about? <laughs> <laughs> go, go read about what happened no, in Macbeth. No, no, it started with Reed. <laughs> no. Uh, the Scottish play, I believe it's called. Then go yes. read a bit about Henry V because yeah. he's a he's a baller Brit, him. And then Look, um, go read I a bit about Agincourt. I think I studied Macbeth at school. You know what? I think... I, I knew I did Julius Caesar. Definitely did that. Ides of March, right? That was... I yeah, think yeah, that that's the Ides of March, yeah. Yeah, which just means the 15th of March, right? He's like, just don't go into the Senate that day because everyone's going to stab you. And he, yeah, like, I feel like tell one, you one thing you could have done, just don't go in on that one specific day. All right, I won't. Oh, man, somehow I did. <laughs> but he probably thought it was like, you know, don't go buy the paper on that day because your horoscope's bad or something. I don't know. Yeah, He's not very clear about it. He just says, beware this date. And you're like, ah, probably avoid trans fats that day. I don't know that, that you know, my, my knowledge of Shakespeare is You know what I think he was thinking, Joe? He woke up that morning... He'd had a heavy no night the night the before, day. and he just thought, you know what, I'm sure there was something I wasn't supposed to do today, and then promptly wandered off to the Senate. These bloody Ides. Ides getting in the way of everything. Yes, def oh, he, he definitely arrived. long play. That's Joe's homework for the next time. God, You know what, Joe, just do, just do the Wikipedia reading. Just read the plot summary on Wikipedia. It'll catch you up. Ah, that sounds like a lot of reading as well. Look... If it, it's not if it's not in digestible chunks, I don't know. So, well, King if there's one Lear, thing that Henry can be the laid at uh, Shakespeare's there. door, it's it's not particularly digestible. You can read some no. of the uh, that they're good stories though. I will give them that. They are good stories. They are they are interesting stories and probably very good for the time. But like you can you can go back and watch like the OG Star Wars trilogy, and you kind of like dialogue needs some work. Great films. 
great stories, but you kind of like, man, if they were if they were written today, yes, long play, they wouldn't have that dialogue. That dialogue would be nowhere near. No, it wouldn't. Actually, uh, long play. If we talk about obviously the Kenneth Branagh version of uh, well, of many of the Shakespeare stuff is good, but have you seen The King on Netflix with Timothy Chalamet? He used to like bloody king, king, kindred spirits. Get a room, lads. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people know no history, Joe. It's just <laughs> it's just no, you it's in just this the... situation. <laughs> Other people know Shakespeare. I'm gonna. I'm gonna I'm ah, gonna, that's a I'm shame. That is a, it's a really good adaptation of uh, Henry V. It's really good. It's, it's a nice. bit more grounded in reality um, than the obviously the story of Shakespeare, but it's it's excellent. the The way they do the the fighting in that is really realistic, or oh, more realistic, I should say, when you consider these guys are wearing like huge suits of metal. They're not running around uh, drop kicking each other like in other medieval. These are the Fantasy dudes in the films. mud, right? No. Well, there's a d- the dudes story. in the mud, but there's a really brutal fight at the start between um, the Henry V. Of the whole film. Dudes in the mud. That's just dudes in, dudes in the mud. <laughs> the King too. Dudes that's in the mud. Yeah. Film. That's a different film altogether. Dudes in mud. <laughs> yes, think, Terry Pratchett is awesome. Joe uh, Abercrombie you know as well. Joe Abercrombie is one of my favorites, and Bernard Cornwell. I guess you can get up there. Long place to just dudes in dudes in mud. A history of warfare. Sounds like you a historical what? drama done by the Wyans brothers, doesn't it? <clears throat> we, you know what? We might have to rename this series just "Dudes in Mud." Dudes in Mud. Total, a trek through Europe. Medi- <laughs> medieval two, total war, and a history of warfare. You know what? That is. <laughs> that's something yeah. we need to maybe consider re- rebrand this whole series. Yeah, we've we've gone down the wrong way. We shouldn't have been going for history. Would be should have been going down. Um, just mentioning how muddy it was with the battles, and how many dudes there were in the mud at that any one time. Should I should I open up a spreadsheet and make sure that's ready for <laughs> we'll the next time round? And how many dudes were there in this particular mud? Well, tons. Um, right, yeah, I think we'll uh, we'll call it there. We're at a place, so next time we'll we'll go get Scotland, Gymnast. take over the home nations, uh, and then I guess have a go at the French, or maybe have a little potter over to Scandinavia. Who knows? We do need a subtitle for next time round, though. Though dudes in the mud is definitely the the front runner. I think it's going to be uh, maybe <laughs> history and medieval to total war, dudes in the mud. England chinning Scotland or something like that. Oof, we or, might get. I think the people turn up for that one should be a lot of angry Scots. You mean Scots, but yes, we'd I just be getting mean. hate for that. <clears throat> no, they 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 take they take it in good stead. They do. This, good, this is good this bands. is historical. <clears throat> we're not actually we're not actually there to actually genuinely chin Scots. <laughs> I mean, we're we're Geordies. Wait, you know what? We got chinned by some people from down London. The, this the whole reason we're, we're English. We could have been Northumbrian or some crack on like that. We didn't get chinned. Fair. We got helped. I th- wasn't it the wasn't it against part of the, the agreement? Scots. No, against the Vikings. The Vikings owned most of uh, Northumberland for a long time. They York was uh, owned a bit of it. Yeah, but with, like that's where the Viking and the like the the northern influence comes from. Is, um, you wait long enough Vikings. and you just become someone else, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> at least, at least from our neck of the woods. Dudes in mud, England one, Scotland nil. Yes, that's the title. And long place, right? That the Danes owned pretty much everything. It, you know what? Like, get Leif Erikson Day, make that a thing. I mean, I know it is a thing, but make it a more legitimate thing than this so whole like columbus day and it's actually yeah the spanish national day as well or one of the spanish national days mm. the columbus day they yeah, celebrate so, over yeah. here yeah but you know that italian who pretended he was spanish and then got on a boat and then pretended he discovered some land which already had people on it yeah look i've discovered this place what are those people no they haven't discovered it yet they're still they're like walking around looking up they haven't discovered the land yet nonsense man Bloody nonsense. <laughs> yes. This has been this has been good good fun. It has, yeah. Have, uh, 
a good laugh, a good this, walk we'll through history, again. and uh, some yeah. some excellent uh, additional footnotes from uh, from long play on that. I think you're going to learn a lot doing this, Joe. It's I like going I'm to school learn, the I'm, second I'm, time, <laughs> or a first time if you've seen my attendance records, <laughs> at least in <laughs> uni. You know what though? I can't believe I didn't actually get into this game because remember, remember when we were both in university and I think it was Civilization Four was released. Yeah. And then I took two weeks off school. <laughs> Remember, uh, yeah, we, had yeah. to, we had to walk through town to get to university, and I was walking through. I was walking through town, and Jesus, HMV, HMV was there at the time. Uh, which I, does HMV still exist in town? Probably not. I or if it does, I, it's, it's maybe online only. Yeah. We're not even allowed into town anymore. But no. walk past HMV and saw a big like display for like Civ, whichever Civ game it was. I'm gonna say four. Civ 4 was out and I just popped in, picked it up and was like, you know what? I'm going to U-turn and not go to my next lecture. I'm going to go home, I'm going to install Civ and I'm going to play that. And I did not attend another university lecture for two weeks after that. And then after two weeks, I probably should go in and attend at least one if I want my degree or something like that. <laughs> Still got my degree, not because of that behaviour. But you know, that worked out in the end. We're all good. We're all good. It did, but yeah. Thank, thank God I wasn't into this as well at the time because I would have had lower than 5% attendance. Oh my God, yeah, university. you can sink a lot of time. It's, Total War is one of those games you definitely go, oh, I'll pop on for 30 minutes and then, you know, you wake up next week and what the hell happened? They don't even have one more turn in this because you barely get through a turn because of how granular it is. Oh, yeah. How many turns have we done this evening, by the we've way? We've done 11 so... turns. We are 11 turns into the game. So, And this is owning uh, five locations. So imagine when you've got like all of this going on. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a. This is we're in for the long haul. Oh yes. It, it, it suits it suits suits long play down to a treat. Then the name works. Yeah, it can it can get a little bit like that, but um, uh, as in granular. But the more you get into it, can the more stuff you unlock as well. So it's a little bit like addicting. Like you unlock better units and better buildings and. The factions are a little bit different as well, and it's kind of it's it's quite good at like just constantly giving you a little bit, like you know, drip feeding a little bit more to give you a reason to stay on it. Um, I'm I'm very much in I'm very much into the granular aspect of it if it's something that I'm interested in because I play I play Motorsport Manager, and that has a lot of like, fannying on with very tiny details, mm -hmm. everything from like you know. A bit like football manager in the same way, where you're like picking staff members and you're like, you're picking people who are going to be part of your team for like maybe like five seasons down the line. Yeah. That's shit now, but you know they're going to develop. Or in motorsport manager, you're like fine tuning car setups to like try and optimize the car to like 100% before you actually have no input in the race. Well, I mean, you can pick strategy or whatever, but you're not driving the cars. Mm -hmm. and you're totally happy to have that go down like you know i, I know some people like the, the like the visceral nature of it and i you know in the same way i like a driving game or you can like a shooting game or you can like a you know a fighting game or whatever in this you're not doing the fighting when it comes to it i mean you're telling the units where to go but you're not pressing the individual button for every sword swing you know what i mean you're like yeah yeah setting up like this kind of like rube goldberg machine well, you're and acting like the general, aren't you? The general doesn't fight for his yeah. soldiers. He just sits at the back and goes, yeah, you guys go and die over in that part of the field and that looks a nice part for you to die over there and go kill some people over there and I'll just sit back here on my horse and have an apple. I love the idea of just like shining, shining the apple on his like blouse as if it's like a cricketer like shining up a ball ready to make a pitch. <laughs> but instead of throwing it, he just sits like reclines back and just goes... Take a bite out of this apple. That's three hundred nights dead. Good day. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Cool. Right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. Um, if if you haven't already, f give us a follow on Twitch. We'll be do. We'll be as I said earlier. We'll be continuing this series as we slowly take over the known world in the medieval era. Um, and Joe will be learning more facts, more historical facts, and getting a second education as well. So there's another reason to join in. You'll actually be witnessing someone learning things about history, which uh, watching, is definitely going to be fun. Watching knowledge slowly be pushed into my yeah, head. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, it's been good fun. Thanks, uh, thanks to Longplay for for tuning in and and joining in with the chat as well and dropping some more knowledge as well. It's good to have someone else help me out on that. And uh, I guess we'll see you next time. So we'll it's a, it's, a, it's a goodbye from Jimmy. It's a goodbye from Joe.